So far this week, I've developed the theory of Taylor series, expressing functions as series. Why did I do this? Well, there are many reasons. I've shown one already. I was able to integrate e to the x squared as a series where before I didn't have much to say about its antiderivative. This video is devoted to one of the main reasons to use Taylor series, calculation. How do computers actually calculate functions? Computers can do arithmetic, but without any other algorithms, that's sort of about it. How do I get from arithmetic to calculating sine, cosine, exponentials, logarithms? I need approximations to functions. Taylor series can do this. Taylor series is one way to give computers a way to approximate and calculate functions. So here's a Taylor series for a function centered at a center point alpha. This is an equality. If a function has a Taylor series, it is equal exactly to its Taylor series, at least inside the radius of convergence. However, I could truncate the Taylor series. Instead of going to infinity, I could stop at some number d. What I get then, instead of an infinite series, is just a polynomial of degree t, d. This is called the Taylor polynomial for the function. It is a polynomial that approximates the function, which I indicate with this version of the equal sign. This means approximately equal instead of exactly equal. If I have a polynomial, a computer can evaluate it. Polynomials are just arithmetic after all. And so this is a way to do a calculation, make a Taylor polynomial and use that to give approximate values for a function. Let me show you how this works by looking at the Taylor polynomials for the exponential centered at zero. I've truncated the series at 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 in this slide, producing five Taylor polynomials. The more terms I take, the more detail I will have, and the better the approximation will be. What do these look like? Well, here they are on a graph. The exponential is in the middle here. P1 is just a straight line, not a great explanation. P1 is a parabola, a bit better. P3 is a cubic and captures a little bit more of the exponential. P5, 4 and P5 likewise get closer and closer to describing the function well over a wider interval. The more terms I get, the better the approximation. The trade-off, of course, is that more terms are harder to calculate. Finding the right Taylor polynomial is always a balance of accuracy and computational work. Let me do this for sine as well. Since the sine series only has odd powers, I'll just take the odd Taylor polynomials. Here are the truncations of degree 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. They are all approximations to sign, with higher degrees giving more detail and a better match to the function. What do these look like? Again, sign is in the middle here. P1 is a straight line, which only matches sign for a small portion near zero. P3 is a cubic, which matches closer for about half a period. P5 matches a bit more, and so does P7, and so does P9. And by the time I'm at P9, I match nearly a whole period and the matching near zero is becoming very accurate indeed. Finally, let me show you an actual calculation. In the previous video, I found a Taylor series for negative ln of x minus one. The center point was zero and the radius was one. I can evaluate this as x at x equals one half, which is inside the radius of convergence. Then by the rules of the logarithm, I'm calculating negative ln of one half, which is the same as ln of two. So this can be a way to approximate the value logarithm of two. I'll take the fifth order approximation. I truncate the series at degree five. I write out all six terms, and then I replace x with one half. Since I'm evaluating at one half, I get six fractions out of this, and I can add up all these fractions to get 1,327 over 1920. This is an approximation of the logarithm of two, and it's already accurate to within about one over 500 which is pretty good for only degree five. This is how a pro Taylor approximation works. I truncate a series and evaluate it, doing the polynomial arithmetic to get an approximate value for the series. The key trick with these approximations is error. I'm not gonna do any error analysis here since it's pretty tricky and I really don't have the time, but there are many techniques to do these Taylor approximations and prove that the error is bounded by some bound, and those techniques allow computers to produce approximations and be sure that their approximations are correct to whatever precision is asked of them. 